Hola guys. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to come on today and share something. Probably Valentine's Day is not the best day to share this, but it's because it is Valentine's Day that I was so thrown off by what little dude and I, along with other parents at the park this afternoon, witnessed on the day that is supposed to be about love. Uh... This may be a little heavy for some of you guys, as I put in the header, if you're an animal lover or have strong opinions on um, children's behavior and animal rights, um, you may be a little affected by this video. Um, but I'll just start. Um, the day started off really nicely. We, uh, um, I gave the boys their gifts and we had an awesome lunch at our favorite Chinese restaurant and I ate way too much seafood. Uh, and then we did some random, a uh, little whatnot mad money shopping. And then we were going to end the afternoon off. Well, little dude and I were going to end the afternoon off at the park because today was beautiful and we're expecting a really, really horrible, um, cold spell to come in. And, um, the park started off well enough. Um, we made our way around to one of his favorite areas in the park, uh, which is this area of these huge wooden type castles is what we call them. They, they look like little wooden forts and that type of thing. And the kids can climb around and, you know, crawl through and hide around in there and stuff like that. And he loves that particular part of the park. So we went, if I pause um and you see me jumping around on the video it's because if you were to walk in i don't want him to relive what we just uh witnessed um because it, it really really upset him right now he's very calm and i got him watching despicable me uh so he's good but i felt i don't know why i just felt like i needed to put this out there and uh we were at the park and heard a lot of commotion behind us regarding a squirrel apparently there was a squirrel sighting at the park no big deal there's lots of squirrels but the kids were particularly loud about this squirrel and i couldn't make sense as to why until i recalled that a week ago in that very same little wooden castle uh i had been warned not to let caleb go in there because apparently the little boy who warned me last week had been bitten by a squirrel in the rafters of the little wooden house. So I knew from last week that the little squirrel was up there. And when I heard the kids going on and on about the squirrel, my first instinct was, oh God, the squirrel's gone nuts and it's attacking kids. But nobody was crying or screaming that they'd been bitten or scratched or anything like that. So I assumed the little squirrel is still up there. Uh, well, you know, I'm watching my kid, you know, I'm watching my child play and the commotion steady starts to get worse and worse and worse. And I hear someone say, get her, get her, there she goes. So I kind of turn around. Now I'm no longer concerned for the kids as I am about what's going on with this little squirrel. Apparently the squirrel is trying to make its way down from the rafters and the children are chasing it. Whatever. Squirrelies get chased all the time. But... Really, really long story short, in the three hours that we were there, this mama squirrel, it turned out, was a mama squirrel. And she had had a little nest or whatever it is that little squirrels build for their babies up in the rafters of that house. And apparently she's in the process of moving them one by one. Where's she? Where'd she go? Oh, that's it. Right next to you. Let her move. Sylvia, get out of there. Well, Sylvia, get out of there. She comes. She's over here on the floor. Run, little squirrel. Stop chasing her.
when these kids see her and they start to throw rocks at her, uh, hit her with limbs and branches. They're throwing handfuls of pebbles and dirt at her. They are trying to chase her and stomp on her. And I'm horrified because who does that? You know, these are children and all the children that were involved were, I, I figured between the ages of seven and 13, 14. And it was disturbing because they're actively trying to hurt this little animal. And they did. Um, they pelted her and chased her, cornered her at one point, hitting her with branches, trying to step on her tail. All the while, this mama squirrel is trying to take her little babies one by one across the playground up a tree. And this little squirrel was amazing to me because she is being attacked left and right, stomped on. But she keeps coming back for her babies. And it's... It's shameful that human beings, a lot of them don't even have that same level of love and care for their own offspring. And here's this little squirrel bobbing and weaving and dodging in and out of just this horribly mean, evil group of kids trying to get her babies. And at one point, there are five of us, three mothers and two fathers yelling at these children to stop chasing her, stop hitting her. Where are your parents? Uh, we're going to call the police. We're going to call animal control. I mean, it was so, it was vile. What we were watching was absolutely disgusting. And during that entire time where those of us parents out there being horrified watching this are having to school other people's kids in none of that time do any of their parents come up, intervene, say something, stop the madness. Nowhere. And there were other adults around. I don't know if they were the parents of some of these sorry little children. And yes, I said sorry little children because that's what they were. Or if they were so embarrassed that they hadn't stepped up soon enough that five of us had to school their kids that they decided, hmm, maybe I should stay quiet. I don't know. I don't know the situation. I do know as a parent, if my child were doing something wrong and my child was called out by another parent, I would speak to my child or I would speak directly to that other parent. But nobody said anything to us. And this went on the entire time we were there. The entire time we were there. It didn't matter where in the park we went, the conversation was about the squirrel. Um, I finally moved away from the area when I couldn't stomach it anymore. It was really upsetting me and it was upsetting Caleb. Caleb couldn't understand what was happening and I wasn't giving too much detail because I couldn't believe what was happening. These kids were trying to kill this little animal. They would not leave this little animal alone. They were laughing. They were joking around. They were insulting the other kids who did step up and say, leave it alone. They were calling the other kids who were trying to defend the little animal all kinds of names, cussing at them. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen committed by kids. And since movies, I think, I've never seen that big a pile of kids, that big a group of kids so intent on being evil and disgusting and mean in my life. And it was just really, really disturbing. And this little squirrel kept coming back until I finally walked away. She came back a total of five times. And as she would run back towards where her babies were, the kids, of course, would run at her. And she would go flat on her tummy. I guess it's a defense thing. I have no idea. I don't know anything about squirrels. Um, she would go flat and as soon as the kids, when she would go flat, these bully jerk kids who were attacking her would run off screaming, thinking that she was going to attack them. And I'm just like, I wish she would. And I said as much, I wish she would jump on y'all's face and bite y'all's friggin' nose off. It's absolutely disgusting. They're not listening to anybody. Their parents have not stepped up and told them to stop. This has been going on and on and on. A lot of our children were getting upset. Um, 
And there was just this horde of evil little future Jeffrey Dahmers. And that's what I'm going to call them, okay? Because uh, studies have proven that children who are cruel and evil to animals have a tendency and usually grow up to be friggin' serial killers. And all I saw out there was a bunch of nasty, evil little kids getting off on hurting this teeny tiny defenseless little thing with an even teeny tinier defenseless thing in her mouth. What finally just did it for me and one of the other parents, she was moved to call animal control to see maybe we were discussing maybe if animal control comes out here, they can control the situation. The park is walking distance. The park connects to the parking lot of the police department of our town. So um, they got called and it wasn't until the police showed up that parents started appearing. And all of a sudden, we didn't know bull, okay? Bull crap, you didn't know. Everywhere in the park that we went, the conversation was the little squirrel who was getting jumped and the little squirrel who was trying to save her babies and the little squirrel who was running across to another tree. There was talk all around the park of this little squirrel, okay? So don't act there. Don't sit there and act like you didn't know anything about it. You just stepped up when stuff got real when the cops got there. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, you want a parent. Now, all of a sudden, you care about this poor little thing. Well, at this point, I've since walked away from the immediate area of called animal control. Police have been called. Everybody who gave a crap has gotten involved in some kind of way from yelling at kids, chasing off kids to trying to block the entrance. There was a dad who tried to block the entrance of the little castle thing where the little squirrel was. But there are so many entrances to it that he couldn't control it. And then you also got to be careful how far you go with other people's children. I get it. But we were actively trying to control the situation. And once everybody that needed to be called was called, I couldn't stomach it anymore. Seeing this poor little mama squirrel kept coming back, kept coming back for her babies. So, and Caleb was getting upset at this point. Um, we walked away to the front part of the park and he was okay. He was calming down. I was swinging him on the swing. He seemed to be better. Thankfully, in situations like this, his attention span doesn't last very long. So he, you think he forgets something. He'll bring it up much later, like a week later, he'll remember, but he can easily move past at the moment. So I was swinging him on the swing and he seemed okay. When this little girl who was about 12 years old comes running up there and says to another little girl that the mama squirrel had a D E A D baby. And I'll spell it because I don't know if he's listening or not. Uh, that the mama squirrel had a D-E-A-D baby at the tree. And I almost threw up. I could not believe that they had destroyed one of her little babies. And Caleb heard that. And he turned around, stops his swing, and asks me if one of the babies was D-E-A-D. -E and I tried to play it off as best as I could when this couldn't have been more than seven years old little boy came running around the corner. This was what scared me to death. Couldn't have been more than seven years old. He is laughing and jumping and telling whoever is listening that they The baby with a rock. This little child was thrilled, thrilled that he had participated in or had witnessed a little defenseless baby animal be killed. And that's when I had enough. Caleb heard it. He lost it. He started crying. He was very, very upset. And this is just the way Caleb is. He is very, very tender when it comes to babies and animals. If he sees anything or hears anything that is remotely close to a threat to their health, to their safety, to he can't see children crying. He can't see children fall in the playground because he will he'll walk to them. Sometimes he'll run to them. He won't touch them, but he he wants to help. It affects him when children and I only see this with him reacting to with children and animals. He wants to help. It upsets him when he sees them hurting. So this whole ordeal 
was a mess. Like I said, he was playing for the most part. I was trying to shield him as much from all the ridiculous goings on as I could. But it eventually got to the point where everybody was talking about it. Everybody knew about it. And now one of the little, the little ones is gone. And it just totally messed him up. And I was sick to my stomach. And he was very, very upset. He wanted to know, did they, did they, where are they, where are they? He tried to walk his way back there. And I'm like, no, 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 we're not even going to, we're going to leave. Then he started asking me, are they going to K-I-L-L the mommy? It was horrible. And the whole time, the whole time, we were there like three hours. The whole time, no parent, like I said, until the police ended up walking around. Nobody stepped up to these kids. Nobody wrangled these kids together. Nobody told them to stop aside from those of us. And these weren't even our kids. And I'm on here saying all this because is this the state of the world we're in this? I mean, I'm not naive to think that the world is full of rainbows and unicorns and sparklies and twinkles. I know it's not. But when... A seven-year-old is jumping up and down absolutely excited because a little animal was killed. There's something wrong somewhere, okay? There's something wrong somewhere. When a group of kids egg each other on to hurt something so defenseless, there is something wrong, okay? Oh, they're just kids. Oh, it's just an animal. Oh, it's just a squirrel. Oh, big deal. Kids will be kids. I'm sorry, okay? Lord knows my children are not perfect and I am not that parent who swears up and down my children cannot do any wrong. But one of the things that I was taught early on, one of the things that I've taught both of my children early on, whether I like animals or not, oh, um, you just love animals too much or, or you care too much about animals' rights or it doesn't have anything to do with being an animal lover or animals' rights or anything like that. It has to do with being a human being, okay? One of the first things I learned, one of the first things that I teach my children, whether I like animals or not, whether it's an iguana, a lizard, a pet snake, whatever it is, if you put your hands on it, if it belongs to somebody, if it is a living, breathing little creature, if you go to put your hands on it, you... What's the first thing you tell your kid? Be gentle. Be nice. If you see them pulling the ears or the tail of something or you see them squeezing something, what is one of the first things you tell a child? Most parents anyway. Be careful. Be gentle. Don't hurt it. They're small. That's one of the first things you teach a child. And if your little kids are at the park cornering a little animal this big with a little animal this big in its mouth, and you're laughing and joking and getting a kick out of it, literally getting a kick out of it, trying to stomp on it, throwing rocks at it, and then dang near having a friggin' party because you K-I-L-L-E-D, one of his little offspring, there's something very, very wrong with you and something very, very wrong with whoever the hell, sorry, is raising you. Okay, bad enough. Before I walked away to the other side of the park, once animal control and the police and everybody had been called, there was a mother. Her daughter was probably eight or nine years old. And as the mama squirrel with the baby in her mouth is trying to run, she keeps stopping it. She keeps stopping it. She keeps stopping it. That one parent was there and she laughed. She just thought it was funny. What's funny about it? What is funny about your daughter impeding this poor little scared animal from protecting her little baby what's funny about that then another time because we i saw it at least five times a little squirrel up and down up and down up and down another time a father of a little boy maybe eight years old maybe throwing rocks throwing rocks throwing rocks at it and the dad yeah get it yeah get it you're disgusted okay I'm not a perfect parent. My children are not perfect children. But for you to egg on your child to hurt something, for you to egg on your child to mess with something, that's disgusting. And then the other little kids who are calling all the other little kids who are getting visibly upset or the other little kids who are trying to help the little squirrel run, you know, get a free path to the tree, wherever she was trying to go. The other little kids calling them, I can't even say the words, okay? They were calling them all kinds of names and no parent ever 
stood up. No parent that belonged to those little friggin' heathens ever stood up to say stop. Thankfully, Caleb was not one of the ones who was being insulted because I would have gone to jail. I would have just smacked a kid and walked myself right across the parking lot into the DPD because that's where I would have belonged. That's where I would have ended up. But my child was not one of the ones who was being called out as being all the horrible words that these children protecting this little animal were being called. I had pulled my child away far enough where I could hear it, but Caleb wasn't directly in there. But it's just a horrible, horrible thing. And I know I've gone on and on and on for 20 minutes about this. And like I said, if any of you guys are animal lovers or not, um, if any of you guys have kids or not, I'm not trying to say I'm a perfect parent. But there are just some things anybody who gives birth to a child should be willing and understand enough to teach their kids. And one of them is empathy. One of them is love for. One of them is respect for. One of them is just giving a crap about another living thing. Okay. I just had to vent. And I know it's not Valentine's Day talk. But it is really, really disturbing. The state that a lot of kids are in is very, very telling as to the state of what this whole wide friggin' world is going to be in by the time we're old enough that they're trying to take care of us. So it's just scary. It's very, very disturbing. And we're home now in our safe little world and with our little squirrels in our trees and we feed ours, you know. So uh, we're back on safe ground. I just wanted to come on here and vent. It's just so disturbing. This is kind of crap, honestly, that will give me nightmares. I'm very suggestible and stuff will stay in my head. So I don't know how it's going to play out in a dream, but I hope to heck that it doesn't play out in Caleb's. Um, he will remember this. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but the next time I go to the park, he's going to remember. And I hope he doesn't remember bawling his little eyes out because it did mess him up. But um, like I said, I'm not really sure why I was even on here. We're going at 22 minutes. And if you haven't shut me off, thank you for listening. Thank you for letting me vent. Um, but uh, I'll be back with our random little shopping Paul, uh, we kind of hit a few places, so that'll be good, right? That'll get us out of the funk that I may have put us in. Sorry about that. But I hope you all have enjoyed y'all's Valentine's, and I hope you all enjoy the remaining time in Valentine's Day. Till my next go-round. Thanks for listening. Bye.